Hi, Hi Tia. I'm Joel Blackman. I'm Yvette Gonzalez Nasser. And I'm Kate Trinidad. And, and we are the states of, of Haiti Sound. <laughs> and we're coming, and we're coming to you live. From TDF. From TDF Facebook page. Facebook page. <laughs> it's hard with the latency. <laughs> that is hard. <laughs> we got it, though. We got it. We did it. We yeah. Did it. <laughs> so let's get rolling. Yeah. So, first question. How did you get involved in Hades Town? Okay. Ooh. How did I get involved in Hades Town? So I took part in the 2017 production at the Citadel in Edmonton, Canada. And I played one of the fates. And uh, that was my first journey into Hades Town. And then luckily when Broadway came around, they asked me to be involved once again. So that's a very short story about how I got involved. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I got involved with Hades Town in 2015. I did a workshop and I was a fate and it was like a New York theater workshop. And then I did another one in 2017 and then didn't do anything until Broadway. And then they asked me to come back and audition and the rest is history. <laughs> and I auditioned for the Broadway production and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, next. Is, do you yeah. want to go? Oh, okay. Is the fate's ability to foresee the future a blessing or a curse? Ooh. Interesting question. Well, I think it depends on who's asking, right? Because like for the fates, like we don't really have anything like we know what's going to happen. So we don't need anything in that regard. But I think uh, I think in general, knowing what's going to happen can be helpful, right? Because then maybe you can make different choices. But it's, if it's going to happen anyway, then it doesn't really it's almost like just enjoy the journey and be surprised on the way you know like it takes a, a little bit of the joy away from finding out the hard way <laughs> oh okay. i think that for us the fates i mean we know who we are we're, we see ourselves and it is often disputed that we are the most powerful gods so i think to us it's a blessing it's like we know everything that's going to happen and we can we can change it as well so i think for us it's a blessing. Uh, for me, I actually think it's neither here nor there. To me, it it, it just is what it is, and um, it's just a fact. It's just a fact, and whatever people decide to do with that knowledge is completely up to them. We'll just continue presenting you with all the facts and what's going to happen, and it's up to you to decide whether you're going to attempt to listen or not. Either way, doesn't matter to me. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> That's how I feel. It doesn't matter. That's how my faith feels. That's how my faith feels. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next. All right. Hades Town features one of the most diverse casts on Broadway. What do you think the theater industry could learn from your company? I love this. I think that it was a very intentional casting process and it was beautiful. I think the world should be, re be represented as it is and it helps other people watching the show being able to see themselves, um, not only just because we look like them or they can see themselves because we look similar to them, but that is also important because you feel represented and you can, and as artists and as young people watching people on stage, they can be inspired and can see creatively and see themselves, you know, doing, doing that as well and seeing role models. And I think it's so important. So I hope um, Broadway and all industries, um, even outside of theater takes um, our lead. It's real. It's a really beautiful thing that um, Hades Town has done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll go continue on that. Yeah, I think what's especially cool about Hades Town is that it's not just diverse in how each of us look, but it's also very diverse in the kind of voices that we bring to that we bring to the stage. A lot of um, musical theater shows, you know have one particular style of voice and that's all that you hear. And while that may be beautiful, where is the beauty in that? You don't get a varying degree of sounds in addition to a varying degrees of looks of people on stage. So I think that's also, I think a lot mm -hmm. of people learn from that. Yeah, so 
yes to what they both said because that's amazing um and and just piggybacking off of what you all said i think that it's also celebrating um just celebrating our differences like what she said about voices you know you have patrick page who's like the lowest bass and Joel too as a contralto and then we have reeve singing super high and falsetto -y. and there's this like i just feel like it's it works so beautifully when everyone can just be who they are and just bring what they who they really are to the table so i feel like the world could could learn from that not just the yeah. theater industry yeah um, yes period okay next, next question <laughs> How oh, yay. can your, if the fates allow, a Hades Town holiday album come about? Well, I'll let Eve eventually take the lead on this. <laughs> is that I think the idea came more than a year ago, Yvette brought this to us, basically the idea of an album. I don't think it was necessarily a, a, a holiday album as of yet, but it was like an EP, a few songs that we wanted, that we were thinking about doing. And, uh, didn't happen with time. And then fast forward to, I think it was Ju July or August. And Yvette, you know, we text as Sister Fates do. We have our own little thread and she suddenly yeah. put it out there once again. Hey guys, what do you guys think of <laughs> doing an album now? <laughs> what? But then I was like, maybe. And then, you know, somebody else can pick the story from here. Okay, I'll take it ahead of that. Right. Sorry. I mean, it's pretty much what you said. You know, last year I was like, guys, let's do a Christmas, you know, EP, because it was already towards the end of the year, so there wasn't a lot of time to put it together. And then we got busy with Hades Town, you know, commitments, and so it didn't quite work out. But then we were in a pandemic, and there's all this time, and so I had pitched the idea to Broadway Records uh, to Van. Oh, my series. Picking up poem. <laughs> I had pitched um, the idea to Van Dean at Broadway Records and he loved it. And so we revisited that conversation this year. And to be honest, we did it a little bit too late. Like we should have started in March, but like nobody knew what was going to happen. So, so in reality, we had a very specific amount of time. Like we had a very tight uh, timeline that we had to create in order to get it done by the time that we got it done. And now it's coming out, no, shameless plug, it's coming out November <laughs> 20th, which is so exciting on Friday. Um, and obviously um, we couldn't have done it just alone and with Van Dien, we brought it to Mara Isaacs and our lead, one of our lead producers at Hadestown. And it was just spectacular to see how quickly it all came together when we just started delegating and everyone was doing what they did. And it was just kind of amazing. It all came together very quickly. And um, Kay, take it away. <laughs> no, I mean, yes, all of that. Yes, all of that. But I, <laughs> what's funny is I specifically remember, remember on our, our Sister Fates thread that Yvette texts us and she goes, can you guys get on a call quickly? Do you remember that? It was like, that's how she started. Like, oh, you guys got on a call? And it was so cryptic. And then we're like, yeah. And then, then, that's how it began. Sorry. That's but so yeah, true. I did. It was a lot to text. I didn't want to be like, okay, guys, here's the timeline. This is a... <laughs> no, it's funny. Uh, who is it? Who is oh, it? Yeah. Oh, I think, I think it's Kaya. Yeah. yeah. Okay, many oh, members oh. of your Hadestown family guests on the album were you able to reunite with them in person or virtually um it was pretty cool so correct me if i'm wrong we have all of our cast um the original broadway cast plus some others from other companies um pr productions before the broadway cast singing on the album Whoa. so it's been amazing to is that correct no there yeah well okay ish sorry i shouldn't have done that ish no 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 correct me because I think it's more so about people who have been like original Broadway cast, and then people yes. who have been hired to come to come join the cast. That's what it, that's what that's what it really is. Yes, yes, right. So we have right. all our family. Well, anyways, um, regardless, <laughs> we've been able to record from um, some people she had said. to record <laughs> remotely, <laughs> like in LA and Canada, uh, but not Juju, but someone else in Canada. And um, but us three, we were able to go into um, an FC United, so that was amazing. And um, we we followed COVID protocol. I felt super safe. We all felt super safe. And, um, but there were times where we were able to see other cast members in passing, whether they had sessions before or after us, which was so special. Yeah. Oh, do you, do you want to say anything? 
I mean, I don't really have anything to add to that. I, I think that's pretty much it. It was really cool to like be able to see, um, you know, Liam and Andre and be in the studio together for some songs. And obviously we didn't get to see everybody, but it just felt like old times again, you know, just especially singing yeah. with my sister fates, right? Like being yeah. us all together and like singing in the studio, like that was such a treat. And especially during a pandemic, like we got, we're so lucky that we were able to pull it off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was great seeing everybody in the, uh, in the studio. And for me too, just because I hadn't been back to New York, hadn't been in New York in a while, it was, uh, yeah. it was really great to, um, to, to see them, you know, in the studio and making music again, and then even yeah. have a little socially distant visit outside of studio time with people. Yeah. Um, it was really great to feel that Hadestown family. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, I have a good one. Okay. I think we all have one. Okay. <laughs> we want to hear your best Andre DeShield stories. Okay. So many. Yeah. So one of my favorites actually is uh, Yvette, I'm pretty sure this is not what you're gonna talk about. Um, I hope it's not what I'm gonna say. I don't, might be Kay. Uh, <laughs> it might be. <laughs> it might be. It was, during, it was during the previews. Oh! Um, but it's just the best, it's during the previews. Um, and there is a song in the show, Nothing Changes, where we sing a <laughs> cappella. <laughs> and then, uh, back in the preview days, Andre the Shields would uh, be on stage and he had a pitch pipe and the pitch pipe was taped so it would only play, supposedly taped, so it would only play the note that we need for us to get, uh, to get our note, <laughs> our note. Um, and he would joke, Andre would joke that one day he's gonna, you know, play the wrong note and he's not gonna, <laughs> clearly he wouldn't do that, but he would just joke about it and we're like, no, no, never, until one day when we got out there, he played the note and it was not the correct note. So what do you do? You have three independent women on stage who we can't really communicate with each other what we're gonna do. So in that moment, I sang the note that Andre gave on pitch, which is the wrong note, but I sang that pitch. <laughs> Yvette sang in the correct key, the original key, and Kay decided this is crazy and I'm not gonna sing. I sing in the middle. So it's yeah. like, how do I agree? How do I find the notes to even agree exactly. with both of you? Exactly. But I will say, thank oh, God. Me, let me finish my part, guys. <laughs> so the joke is, we all were so committed that we sang the first half of the song, not in any key together. <laughs> so no. I apologize to anybody who saw that show because it sounded a hot mess. Until the second half of the song, there's a bit of a break. Liam came in with the piano and we got back on track. So we finished- oh, I almost forgot key. that. We finished in the correct key, but we definitely started 5,000 keys away from the original. Hence, that, I have, go ahead, what do you want to say? I just thought I have PTSD. When you started <laughs> mentioning that story, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so funny. And of course, Andre apologized. He felt terrible about it. We apologized and we knew that it wasn't on purpose. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it, was, it was funny though. But funny. it makes for a great story. It makes for a great story. Um, that is such a good story. <laughs> um, okay, I have one from, what I don't know what performance it was, but we it was in Way Down Hadestown 1. And Andre was holding his umbrella next to a candle and he had these feathers on his coat and I we were we had the three of us happened to be staged right in that moment which is also where Andre was so I got to see his feathers start to catch on fire and I always kind of watch him on stage I just it's a thing that I always did and I still you know it was just constant no matter what but for some reason his feathers started catching on fire and his suit started <laughs> like catching on fire. So I went over there with my violin in one hand and I took it out with like my hand. And then after he's like, you are my guardian angel. <laughs> and he calls me that from then on. Um, Liam gave me like a fire marshal pin, but that was like, it was so funny because he's That's such wild. a, like such a hot, you know, fiery performer that it was like quite literally uh, a, a fiery moment <laughs> for him. So good. Um, that's, yeah, that was an amazing moment, Harry, <laughs> but amazing. Cause you were like, you were like, not today, Hades. Not to, not today, not today. <laughs> not today, not today. Oh my goodness. Well, those were two at the top of my list, but 
I don't know. Um, I mean, he does something funny every single show. I mean, every single show, meaning when, whenever. So we're on, we're on stage the entire, almost the entire time. We take what one break and second act. Yeah. Um, but there are so many times between Andre and me that we we have so many moments together that when he's not facing that audience, he is giving me some attitude and like we have our own scenes happening and I have to watch my face because I'm facing the front. But that's Andre for you. But that's Andre on and off the stage. He is just he is just wild. He's a wild child and I love him so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what do you miss most about doing the show? Andre! <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I miss everybody, honestly. Like, I, I miss our Hadestown family. I miss getting to perform. Because, you know, when you're a performer, it's like one of your favorite things in the whole world is just to express yourself freely on stage and, like, feel the expansiveness and tell a story and, and tell a story in community. And that's such a, it's just one of my favorite things. And so I, I miss the audience. I miss seeing or feeling the energy that whatever is happening on stage is connecting to them. And and there's this, that Matt, I mean, I know I'm paying attention to the show, but every now and then, you know, like it's that, that connection that, that um, it's a, it's a communication that happens. And I, I totally miss that. So yeah. And like this little moments backstage, like in our dressing rooms, like being silly and singing just excessively <laughs> after we just sang a show. <laughs> so eating, some of my things. eating, <laughs> oh gosh yeah just creating art you know with people making making something special and different every single night i so look forward to what different thing is going to happen tonight what may go wrong which is which which can turn into a beautiful a, a, a beautiful thing um yeah just the live aspect of performing definitely absolutely yeah yeah i miss the camaraderie and a little and of course, our Hades Town family and just doing this, like we're just silly together. And, you know, I, I would tell other people who asked me, like, how's the show going? How's Mike, my husband? I'm like, oh, great. But, you know, I see I see these two girls more than I see my husband. So it's like you you all are a big part of, you know, my life. And so is the, the our Hades Town cast. And um, like what Yvette said, too, I, I love the the communal experience that you get when you share such a moving and powerful story not only with ourselves that we get to experience every single day but with the audience and it's such a shared experience and it has such a powerful message that i'm just so grateful that we have the ability to share it and to be a part of it so i yeah. i truly miss performing and being with you all yeah yay <laughs> last question last Education? question i think so yeah, yeah. Okay, last question. With theater in a state of flux, what are your hopes for its future? Oh, well, I hope we can obviously get back onto stage. It's going to be different just because we know now that you know, there's this virus out there, but we can also do it more safely and thinking of others and our well being. And I think we're going to have a lot more safety, cleaning, health protocols that we never once really took it seriously until now. It'll, it's going to definitely be different, but I know there's going to be a day when we can all um, get back on that stage and do what we love to do. It's going to be different though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also in terms of that, I think what coronavirus has allowed is for this great pause and uh, for us to reflect on a lot of, a lot of things that maybe, um, need fixing within many industries, including the theater industry. And I think that, I say that we're having a racial reckoning right now. America in particular is having, well, North America, let's say, is having a bit of a racial mm -hmm. reckoning. And I'm hoping with all these realizations and truths that are coming forward that we see a major change in who is controlling the kind of stories that are being told and the kind of people that are being used to help convey those stories. I help more stories and more, more voices come to the light. Um, so yeah, that's something that I think that can be learned throughout this pause. And I think I hope with that being said, hopefully with those kind of changes being implemented and being brought forward, theater will be even more sh stronger and be even more inclusive of everyone, not just who's on stage, but who's running the show from top to bottom. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Um, hmm, what are, so 
what are your hopes for its future? I mean, the thing with theater is like, I mean, I love what, you know, you guys said. Um, I just, I feel like when something is not able to function anymore, it, there is time um, for innovation and there's time to think about, well, how else can we tell stories? How else can we still have these experiences? And I feel like, you know, uh, you know, some people are trying to televise shows, right? Like, let's figure out a way to safely do it, like in a sag after way. Like, you know, there's things like that that are starting <laughs> to happen. You know, uh, there's a, I think it was announced, it was like a, a show called The Christmas Carol that they're doing just by green screen, you know, which is, I can't wait to check it out. You know, I actually think Patrick Page might be in it too. So that could be kind of fun uh -huh. um, for us to like have our Hades Town friend up there. But, um, but yeah, I just feel like, um, I hope that we're able to come up with just some new ideas. You know, I mean, TV and film is always is always amazing because I think SAG, you know, the union has really figured out a way to to do things safely, and so that world is starting to come back. But for theater, because it's like it's so many people a lot of times, you know, that I feel like there's, um, you know, I heard about a show recently where they're going to have screens as part of the show. So it's like there's there's this, there's this like innovation that is uh, brimming, you know, with possibility. Like I feel like it's it's what has to happen next, you know. Yeah. Or we get a vaccine and everything goes back to normal. So honestly, like either way, I hope that uh, you know my hope for the future of theater is that it that it comes back, that we're able to gather once again and and tell our stories. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. <laughs> Thank for you watching. guys. Thanks for the questions. Yes.